everyone, and thank you for joining us today. The USC Family Caregiver Support Center is pleased to provide this educational video for families and relatives who are taking care of one or more loved ones. This virtual event is part of our ongoing caregiver discussion series that explores how our life experiences shape us as caregivers. Today's discussion will be around the family caregiving experience through the eyes of working family caregivers. I'm Jenny Peterson, and I will be your host for today's program. Now, for, before we begin, I want to introduce you to the center. The USC Family Caregiver Support Center serves and supports family caregivers as they navigate through their caregiving journey. The center provides services such as information and referral, support groups, evidence-based trainings, community education, and much, much more to family caregivers seeking help. If you're a family caregiver who is struggling or needs support, we can help. Our center is also home to the Los Angeles Caregiver Resource Center, which is part of the California statewide system of 11 caregiver resource centers. Now, if you happened upon this video by chance and you don't know about our center yet, please visit our website at losangelescrc.usc.edu for more information. Better yet, you can even sign up for our program right on our website through the CareNav link on our homepage. Family caregivers need support, and our center is here for you. Now, let's get the show going. We've invited three family caregivers here today to give us insight into the working family caregiver experience. This discussion will allow caregivers in this particular demographic uh, to relate to and learn about others' triumphs and struggles when providing care for a loved one. These caregivers will provide some insight into their life experiences and their family roles and how these things shape their caregiving decisions and color their perspectives. Being a working family caregiver creates unique circumstances that are specific to the community. Grace Avila, who is a family care navigator at the USC Family Caregiver Support Center, will be our moderator for today's panel. Take it away, Grace. Hi, hello everyone, and welcome and join us in our caregiver panel today. My name is Grace Avila. I am one of the family care navigators here at the USC Family Caregiver Support Center. Today, we have a very important discussion um, with our family caregivers in discussing that balance between working and caregiving for a loved one, which we know so many of you often do day in and day out. They will be sharing their unique caregiving experiences and also sharing perhaps those challenges along the way with having to balance both caregiving and working at the same time. So what I'd like to do is, you know, let's go into some introductions. We do have Jerry, Monica, and Susan here with us. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll make sure that everyone introduces themselves and who they're caring for. And if you don't mind, after introducing yourself and who you're caring for, is also um, sharing with us when you had that aha moment that you said that you were a caregiver, when you finally said, oh, to yourself, I'm a caregiver, if you don't want mind walking us through that experience as well. So we'll start with Monica. Hello, everyone. My name is Monica Reyes. And I am a caregiver for my father, Moises Rodriguez. He is 88 years old. Um, he is a dementia cancer survivor, as well uh, a veteran of the Air Force. And I have been his caregiver primarily for the last four and a half years. I would say that the aha moment came for me when he said, 
I can't do anything without you. And that had to do with his autonomy, with um, driving, medical appointments, business affairs, and the relinquishment of what was part of his role in life in the family. Wow, thank you for that, Monica. Susan, if you don't mind introducing yourself and who you're caring for and your aha moment. Thank you, Grace. And that was very nice, Monica. Um, I, my name is Susan Evans. And 11 years ago, my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And it didn't come as a surprise. We all know that the diagnosis takes months, years sometimes. Um, but I realized at that particular moment, even though I knew I was losing my father and his mental capacity, that in that room when the diagnosis came, I looked at my mother and I thought, wow, um, I had just become an empty nester. All three of my children had uh, left for college. A lot had graduated from college. Um, and I realized at that moment, that aha moment, that not only was I going to take care of my father, um, I lived very close by to my parents, um, in the progression of his disease and being a support for him, but also my dear mother, that I could just see her stress and literally went from, you know, my parents had been married for 65 years and, and, uh, that she was half widowed. And so my father passed away last October after um, actually li living at Kensington Senior Living, um, a dedicated memory care. And he was there six and a half years and he passed away in October. And I continue to be the primary caregiver for my mother. So the balance was the hardest thing for me between mother and father. Thank you for that, Susan. Jerry. Hi, um, I'm Jerry Vargas and um, I take care of my mother. My mother is 96 and in 2007, we were notified that she had Alzheimer's. She was still working as a teaching assistant at 81 and um, Realized the time had come. I was the oldest and I lived out of state and my siblings had helped with grandparents. So I knew that it was my turn, my time. I was teaching and I was in a, it was gonna be a horrible year with a horrible principal. And I went, called human resources and said, can I retire yet? And decided it was time and took on caregiving. Um, at that point, the doctor informed me my mother was so healthy she could go another 20 years. And in fact, I've been caregiving for 15 years. And um, uh, I tried working part time in the beginning. And we bit by bit realized that we could not um, trust my mother to handle telemarketers on the phone and those kinds of things. That was the first tip off to the caregiving. And then as she became more infirm, she'd always been very active, uh, real caregiving started to, to step in. My mother thankfully has, um, is, has a, a very sweet personality. And so the responsibilities are, are relatively light compared to some people who have a Alzheimer's patient uh, to work with. And so I've been very thankful, but you don't expect your life to change dramatically. You don't realize how long caregiving can be. And I think another aspect for me for understanding who I was was realizing this had become my life. It was not a temporary moment. Thank you. Thank you for your introductions and your stories, although that's not the complete picture, right? We know there's a lot more to it. Um, one of the things as we are encountering or embarking this caregiving journey, 
And as you all described your aha moment, I'm wondering if any of you had struggles with that, of identifying yourself being a caregiver, as so many people are so much in the day-to-day, -day, right? We're in the day-to-day, -day, we have a hundred things on our list to do. Was there any challenges of, of identifying yourself as a family caregiver or not knowing or questioning yourself? Like, am I really caregiving or maybe I'm not caregiving? Um, maybe this is not caregiver. I'm not a professional caregiver. Any moments like that that you had? Um, we'll start, let's see. You know, Susan, go ahead. Well, I was gonna kind of comment on what Jerry said is you're in the moment, you have this obstacle in life, you know you have to engage and you're all in but you really don't understand the depth uh, and, um, and the responsibility and how incredibly difficult trying to balance your life when you've taken this on um, and balance your own family, balance your friends, you know, balance, balance your job, you know, balance, if you have a spouse, balancing your relationship with, with your husband becomes incredibly um, incredibly challenging. And, and I don't know about Jerry and Monica, but when I was younger, I, I don't even remember people talking about caregiving. I mean, it was yeah. just, I mean, caregiving seems to me like this new term that, that is now, I mean, people writing books and it's all about, you know, your mental health and your caregiving. And, and I always kind of felt like we're all caregivers a little bit. If you're a mother or if you're a teacher, you're a caregiver, or a daughter, you're a caregiver. Mm -hmm. I mean, a friend, you're a caregiver. But I never realized the extent of, of taking on, and I have a brother that lives away, so I take 100% of the responsibility. And I think that's my right. biggest challenge is not resenting my brother, because I don't resent him, but sometimes I'm very angry because I'm taking it mm -hmm. all on. And just not really understanding the extent. It's very hard to plan. Um, you know, we take my mother on every family vacation. And it's becoming more and more difficult. So now we're adjusting what we would normally do. But but you're. I think what what Jerry said and what Monica said with your with your dad is. You know, you're kind of all in when you take this on. And so the help that that Grace and um, and USC is providing is so important because people have to be able to balance that commitment. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, Susan. Anyone else like to share that that experience of embarking the caregiving journey and knowing if or whether or not you had struggles with that of identifying yourself of being a caregiver. Well, I, I will say that I think from uh, a young person, I always felt that that was part of my, my personality. I worked many years in the medical field. Um, so the nurturing and supportive uh, part of me was something that was natural. But I believe that once you realize that like uh, Susan said, it's not a temporary situation and that there's complete dependence upon your guidance, um, your responsibility of whether it's uh, monitoring um, daily living activities, medications, then being an advocate for medical um, professionals, legal yeah. issues, um, the banker, the, I mean, I think I've at one point was a, um, a roofer, a plumber, uh, a housekeeper, an accountant. I mean, like yes, every day yes. was a new job because his ability to do things um, was limited. And, yeah. You know, I own a company. I own a, a commercial landscape company, and to be able to support that as well as four children, a home, a husband, um, is daunting. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, well, again, my experience what has been again a a, a, a gratitude to the programs that have been provided through USC and other organizations 
um, and the uh, community that is provided to not feel alone or scared or even upset, similar to what Susan said. Um, I have two brothers. One is out of state and one actually lives with my parents and he has severe dementia and um, uh, memory loss. So there's an, uh, there's another uh, patient in the family. Nevertheless, um, it's, uh, it's that moment where you say, okay, let's just take it one step at a time. Yes, yeah, I, I, I really hear what you're saying. I, in my case, I had um, gone back, I was teaching and I went back for my master's and got it in aging. So when this happened, I thought, oh, I got this. Well, I didn't got this because you just don't know how deeply you're stepping into something. And it's one thing to know it intellectually. It's a whole other thing when it's in the day to day. And um, I, my home and my children were in New Mexico and Albuquerque. And I came back to the home I grew up in, in Los Angeles. At that point, my mother was walking every day with the dog. And as I say, I worked part time at that point and we were good. We just had things we had to be careful of. And um, I kept thinking, oh, I'll be here six months, couple of years. I'll be back to my life. No, this became my life. And I was grateful that members of my family said, don't think of this as just a blip on the screen that your time is on hold. Think of, start looking to how you can make this, you know, open up your life. To being here now and I was grateful because I didn't think of myself of being at home I thought of itself myself as being in my my mother's home mm -hmm. nothing was mine you know all of the things you identify with and so I had to open myself up to um, not only embracing all the responsibilities but finding ways of meeting my own needs six months into feeling so smug I hit that wall of realizing I was angry, I was afraid, I was mm -hmm. frustrated, I was all these things. And then of course you feel guilty because this is your mother. You don't want to admit you're angry. And um, I was so thankful for programs that gave me an opportunity of learning more and sharing and um, embracing what came on. And then it became an adventure. Um, Luckily, as I say, my mother was was has a very mellow personality because I would hear these horror stories. But I I at some point I had to accept she can't change, only I can change. So when I would get real frustrated with something and I think, why am I getting frustrated? What can I do to make the situation better for me? And so it's just been this gradual change in myself along with my mother. Uh, you talked about siblings and in my case, I knew that my sisters, everybody lived far away, but I had two sisters that were reasonably close. One who had tried doing it earlier, and this is another issue that comes up. She mismanaged my mother's money and um, we were letting her pay bills because nobody wants to handle everything. And that turned out to be a real scary thing. We had to confront that. So she was out of the picture. Everybody was working, but I had retired. So I didn't feel it was fair for me to ask them to help. And I had to get over that. I had to get over the fact that you, it's everybody's parent. It's everybody to share in, in, in the whole thing. It's just how you ask. And I had to get used to being not embarrassed to ask for help and ask for relief and all of those things. So it's it's um, it's a definite journey, not just for them, but what goes on inside you. And as Susan pointed out, you don't think about the term caregiving. You just know that we come from, we're all of a generation where that's what women did. You took care of family and your children and you expected to step back in. 
but you didn't expect to have all the responsibilities that come with being a parent. And in this day and age, all of the things you have to do. And uh, so I think it's a real learning curve. And I'm thankful my one sister and her husband take on all the financial issues, thankfully, and I handle all the medical and the day to day. I'm the one who lives with her. And I am so thankful I have people to help because my heart goes out to people who have to do it all. Monica, your hands have got to be full with your children and your business and your husband and everything. And my kids are grown. So it's, it's uh, not as intense that way. So counting blessings, definitely counting blessings. Yeah. Thank you for that, Jerry. You know, one of the things you all touched on very important points, um, but one of the things that often so many people want to, you know, obviously we're all here to share stories, right? One of the important things and providing that insight, and let's just be real, right? One of the things is working in caregiving is such a struggle. Definitely, you know, we'd like to keep that balance, but sometimes that balance can't often be maintained. And it's a learning process, right? You have to learn and figure out what works. But speaking of working and caregiving, does anyone, or maybe perhaps we'll start with Susan, um, if you don't mind sharing any barriers or challenges that you faced in your journey of caregiving and having to figure it all out, those barriers that you might have encountered while being a working caregiver? Uh, I, I think what Jerry said, and I'm sure we'll hear from Monica because she has her own company, but it, it's all about the the responsibility and balancing it. And, and Jerry touched on guilt. Um, unfortunately, guilt drives the balance because am I doing the caregiving well enough? Am I doing my job well enough? Am I being a mother well enough? Am I being a wife well enough? Am I being a friend well enough? And it becomes incredibly difficult when you're caregiving for an older person, your mother, your father, because they have always been your priority and, and you feel like you need to go to them first. But um, I think in these type of support groups, sometimes you learn that it's okay. It's okay that, that you balance that maybe, you know, a kid needs you, or maybe your spouse needs you or a friend needs you and your mother needs you and your dad needs you. Um, I think that's the most challenging thing is to find, uh, to find that balance and to managing your guilt because you feel guilty. Yes. You're not doing any of them enough, well enough. Thank you, Susan. Most definitely. Monica, what has been your experiences with the challenges or the barriers with working and caregiving? Well, uh, you know, I so relate to Susan. She she hit it right on the nose with regards to the guilt. Um, you know, there's also, I come from, I'm Latina, I'm Mexican, and there's also a um, expectation from our culture that the daughter will step in in that uh, caregiving role. So th there's, there's another layer of guilt there. Um, but my barriers have been, um, one, self-imposed because in the sense of not uh, learning limitations um, or creative thinking initially, really believing, okay, I can work from 12 to 4 and, um, you know, process whatever I need to and, and then uh, manage them earlier in the afternoon. Well, something occurs. So that whole um, situation has to turn around. Appointments have to be moved. Um, and it's I don't want to say it's a delicate balance because it isn't delicate. It's something that I just, I can put a, a kind of a structure, a loose structure of my day or even my week. But I also have to be prepared in the back of my mind that if there's an incident and there's an immediate need, that is my responsibility. And so um, my time is not always my own. 
Um, but I have worked very hard these last six months and um, with the support of the our, our last course um, with, a, with regards to uh, loving someone who has dementia is really giving myself time, uh, blocks of moments that I can rest or um, just do really intentional self-care. And I think that and also um, remembering, especially since Father's Day uh, was just upon us, you know, my father is um, eighty, going to be 89, and I don't know how long he'll be here. And I really want to um, make the commitment. Well, I, I do have the commitment, but continue um, the commitment of making it easier for him and that he feels acknowledged and honored and loved and respected um, because he he has lost his autonomy and he feels he's lost his voice. And so um, uh, it's very important for me to um, to address that, but also address my own needs and be responsible. I think that's part of being a responsible adult working caregiver is um, self-care. Definitely. Something that I want to add to all of that that is, I think, very important. And I, I sometimes I think we're afraid to say it, but your relationship definitely changes as a caregiver with that person. So that my mother, for instance, was my rock all my life. We were best friends. And um, uh, I, through all the, the, the ups and downs and insanities of, of my life, I could always go to my mother, no matter what. And so being there for her was a no-brainer. I adore my mother. But what I discovered as a caregiver is that there is an emotional there's some kind of a, it's not a separation, but you, you're, it changes. And so there were times when I found that it was very uncomfortable for me to, to hug her or to be close, physically close to her. And then I would feel guilty about that and then try to understand that. And then I had people who had been doing caregiving longer than I explained to me that, that no, it's, it does, it messes with your brain the relationship. Um, when I hear stories of elder abuse, I have more understanding of that, but I realize how tremendously important it is for people to have support because you need to find ways of understanding what's going on in your own head in order to be the best caregiver you can be. And, um, it's also important to take time in that, in that process of rewarding yourself and coping with yourself to um, start anew, to not build on the negative, but find ways of letting the negative go and refreshing so you can come back to that person with, with passion and love and, and, and be fresh. Um, but it can be hard. and. Um, it, that cannot be that cannot that aspect of caregiving should not be ignored. It's so easy for people to say, "Oh, well, how nice you're taking care of," but they don't realize that you can have dietary issues and bathroom issues and mm -hmm. laundry issues. And you know, is it time to get the commode chair? Is it time to get the pull-ups? How are we dealing with you know whatever the width is? and um, family members and friends who would come over and they were sure that if they just said it right, my mother would understand and be able to follow through. And you would see that this was not gonna work. And how do you, you don't wanna hurt feelings, but you realize there's tension created unnecessarily. There's so many aspects to caregiving. You don't know till you're in it and having people to reach out to is so important to your own 
survival and sanity and not getting lost and depressed in the process. Yes. Thank you for that. No, definitely self-care and figuring out those out outlets and windows of opportunity. You know, one of the things yeah. that that I wanted to ask all of you is, I know, Monica, you mentioned that sense of community. That word is very important. But considering all of you have your experience with working and caregiving, so let me ask you this. In the work setting, and all of you have your different experiences, how was caregiving viewed or what type of support did you feel that you had there? Maybe it wasn't even discussed, um, but just wanted to touch on that. What was the sense of all of you when working and caregiving and what was that looked at? How, how was that viewed, caregiving and working? The support well, end of it. Yeah. I would good? say when I was in a, a corporate environment, uh, it was frowned upon. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was something that, you know, I never uh, was shamed that that was my commitment um, with regards to uh, my support of my my dad and my family and uh it it my experience was that um there were other things that were more important that took away from the focus of whatever uh, career path i was um because of their needs um and albeit i made uh, every effort to um to overcome that with regards to my employment or my position, um, I think it was still um, in the background with regards to um, my time or my focus. Now, um, now with having my own company, um, I have some freedom and the people that work for me and with me uh, completely understand um, my caregiving guidelines and uh, requirements and not a challenge whatsoever because um, my again my community is somewhat or is in a situation where they uh, they're either in a similar environment uh, having aged uh, aged people in their life or uh, other family members and we are actually ongoingly supporting it's now they come to me and say i need help with social services i need help with veterans can you assist me and so um it's kind of shifted i'm now a, uh, a, seen as an advocate and a helping hand with the people in my life wow that's amazing Thank you for that, Monica. It's one of those things that we always say, right? You will eventually be that individual that people will go to for that yes. guidance and support. Yeah. So thank you for that, Monica. Susan, how about for yourself? Any, any challenges there in the workforce or how was caregiving or how is caregiving looked at or your experiences? I'm really lucky and I feel very fortunate. Um, I guess we could call it my second act or my second term in life. I really dedicated my life to Alzheimer's, um, to raising money for uh, caregiver support, mostly. Um, and I was I started a little uh, bracelet company with a friend of mine whose mother passed away from Alzheimer's because I felt I felt like there just was not enough information out there, and I was really struggling with um, support. And so I was really lucky. So I do educational events on uh, brain health, caregiver support. And the, the company that I do that for is Kensington Senior Living. And they are incredibly understanding of the balance and the struggle. So I think, um, back to Monica's point, it depends on where you work. Um, but I think being transparent is probably better um, because the team uh, that surrounds me in doing these educational events is incredibly supportive and always check in, you know, how is your mom now? And, um, and, and Monica and Jerry are both um, struggling with the whole dementia aspect of it, which makes it so much harder. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I, I think once again, what Jerry said is you need to get the support you need. And if that's from a company, um, I think to let them know what you're, you know, struggling with or what you're, you know, balancing right now is, is difficult. Yes. Thank you for that, Susan. You know, I know that time-wise we're kind of winding down here, but I want to make sure we have um, another question that I want to make sure that we ask this question. I should say I should ask this question and all of you will have that opportunity to answer, but what would be your biggest piece of advice for working family caregivers? And Jerry, we'll start with you. Uh, I think, first of all, um, when I started, my sisters and I went over to, in this case, Lisa Gibbons caregiver program uh, that happened to be nearby and said, okay, we're in this, what do we do? I think that reaching out to Alzheimer's Association or depending on whatever, obviously not all of the, uh, for caregiving, it's not always going to be dementia, but availing oneself or finding out what's out there. Um, that can include support groups. Sometimes your doctor is helpful. Uh, the reality is you have to become your own advocate. You have to reach out. And if you're not hearing things that are supportive, find, seek other, other people or agencies of people to give you help. Um, it makes a huge difference if you start off armed and ready as opposed to being thrown into the arena with nothing. And um, I, I think that's the biggest thing. And then also don't push people away, whether it's your family or friends, if people offer. We may not be, we may feel awkward as far as asking for help. Most of us, I suspect, are super women as that category where we're used to doing everything ourselves. It's real important to learn to accept kindness, openness. Could you do this for me? I don't know how to find this. Whatever it is, reaching out. And that humility brings in, um, it helps balance because that first six months to a year, regardless of what caregiving you're doing. And at this point, like Monica was saying, and Susan, I'm sure you had the same thing. Everybody starts coming to you because they realize you've now had this experience. So you're trying to help everyone else. Uh, so you hear all kinds of stories. Um, we haven't touched upon financial, but that can get very, the legal and financial can get uh, notoriously horrible if you don't reach out. And even reaching out, things come back at you you weren't expecting. So I would say that's the biggest thing is don't try to fight the battle yourself. Thank you, Jerry. That's a really good point. Yes. Monica? Uh, I would echo Jerry's um, sentiments I, and her advice. I think that uh, first and foremost, looking at what resources are available. Um, as a new caregiver, I think that... Um, there are there's an, a lack of awareness of the plentiful resources in every avenue for um, for caregivers and those you care for. So uh, and it's it's almost like a checklist, you know, health, financial, legal, home, and then kind of. Uh, working your way there, services. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes a lot of failure. Um, so I would say that whatever uh, organizations or resources or people that, again, similar that have already been through it, um, that one can uh, create relationships with, I think that's extremely beneficial. That's saved me uh, many, many times. And I think the other uh, thing would be, the other piece of advice is uh, learn to, to care for yourself. As a yes. caregiver, one 
some can sometimes neglect all aspects from I would forget to eat or uh, I wouldn't take my medication or, you know, just I was overtired and then, you know, it, it was not well. It was not well for me. So yeah. I think that that has to be um, a very important part of the caregiving aspect is um, making making room to care for yourself uh, during that, that time. Thank you, Monica, for I, that important advice. Susan? Well, I, I couldn't agree more with both Jerry and Monica. And, um, you know, I I actually made a list, like what Monica was talking about. Like, I'm caregiving, and so I'm worried about nutrition. I'm worried about their safety. I'm worried about their financial. I'm worried about how am I going to navigate Medicare, Medi-Cal, and all the legal stuff. And, yes. and and hygiene and really making a list for that and figuring out who can help support you in those different areas because it is overwhelming. And what Monica said before is you have your schedule, we're working, we have a balance in life, right? And so you look at your week and you go, okay, this and this and this, but all those unexpected disturbances in your week, right, Monica? Wait, I, I'm supposed to be here. So what I've learned yeah. to do with my mother now, because- my mother would like for me to spend every day with her completely is I figure out times that we can schedule or her doctor's appointments. And I will say to her, you know, that day's not going to work for me, but I can take you to the doctor on this day. So I'm trying to manage the expected uh, schedule and because I can't manage the unexpected. So yeah. there is, there's just so much up in the air, but I think what Jerry and Monica said are a hundred percent, you know, right on. And at the end of the day, taking some time for yourself is so important. Patting yourself on the back. Thank you realize you. that everything we're all saying, unfortunately, we learned the hard way. Yeah, that that's so Thank true. You. And what Monica said about culture, you are expected to do it. So that adds another kind of, okay, here we go. And I know that right. all four of us are all in. Because when it does hit the fan, you're there. So we're there, right. we're, we're there with the, the, the squeegee and the claws and we're cleaning Whoa. up the mess. And then you got to go. Right. Right. Yes. So thank, thank you. you thank you for all of you. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Well, um, that's all that. Oh, that's about all we have for today in terms of time. We know that we can definitely continue this conversation, right? Because there's so much, as you all pointed there are so many layers to caregiving. It's just not one aspect. There's so many things to cover. And we really do appreciate your honesty, your candor, and being able to share your individual experiences with working and caregiving. We know that it's not easy, but just being able to provide some bit of that insight so that others can definitely relate and know that they are not alone. So we want to Definitely thank you again, Jerry, Monica, and Susan. Thank you for all that you do, that you continue to do. And thank you for being a part of this wonderful caregiving panel today with Working in Caregiving. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. And thank you, USC. Yes. Yes. Thank you for your support, your yes. programs. You are a blessing. Yes. Amen to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Grace, for that informative panel. I also want to take a moment to thank our caregiver panelists for their willingness to share their thoughts in such an honest manner. Your courage today in sharing about both your struggles and triumphs helps those of us who are watching to feel not so alone in our caregiving journeys. I want to say you are an inspiration to us all. We hope that this discussion helped build your understanding about some of the unique challenges that working family caregivers face. And even though we are focusing on a specific type of life experience today, I think we can all agree that some of these things that we've heard today, some of these experiences, some of these feelings are all universal. We can all relate to some part of what we've heard about and discussed today. Now, being a family caregiver can often be very, very confusing and overwhelming. Sometimes you don't know where to start or what you need. And that's where 
we can help. The USC Family Caregiver Support Center is here for family caregivers. Our goals are to educate you, connect you to resources, and support you throughout your caregiving journey. Please be sure to visit us at losangelescrc.usc.edu or visit our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to learn more and connect with our center. This discussion series will be available on our YouTube channel if you or someone you know wants to watch them on their own. Now, if you came upon this video by chance, perhaps YouTube suggested it to you, and you want to learn more about our center, please visit our website for more information. Our website is losangelescrc.usc.edu. And also, if you've watched all the videos in this series and you still haven't signed up for our program, what are you waiting for? All you need to do is sign up for all you need to do to sign up for our program is to click on that CareNav link on our homepage. It's never too late to ask for help. Remember that oftentimes it's what you don't know that hurts you. So don't be shy about getting connected to one of our experts. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please like it below. Also, make sure to click on the red subscribe button to subscribe to our YouTube channel and be notified every time we post a new educational video for the caregiving community. Take good care of yourself. Until next time, just remember that caregivers fight on.